This video is sponsored by the distant voices that haunt me during the late hours of the night. Is your house built on an ancient burial ground? Find out today! Hello testicles! Alright, time for another video. Uh, I'm not feeling too hot today, so I'm staying inside, not going to go out to the shop. Uh, but we are going to talk about uh, what is probably a lot of guys' favorite subject. Outfitting your primary weapon system. Now, today, you know, with the uh, coming about of Picatinny rails and all sorts of other, you know, key mod and all that stuff, um, the options for uh, attachments and accessories are pretty much limitless. Uh, so, today I want to talk about, you know, what attachments I run and what, what stuff I use on my weapons. Um, and I, I also, you know, just want to kind of give you some ideas if you're new and you're like, well, what do I really need? Uh, so, we'll start with a pretty much blank canvas. Uh, my M16A1. Uh, you know, by the time Picatinny came about, the uh, A2 was already standard issue, but uh, the A1 was actually in military inventory in the United States up until about 2003 before they started, you know, they just weren't seen as much. Uh, but if you are in the military, um, if you ever get a chance, uh, if you look at uh, your arms room or your armory, you might uh, find some old retro rifles uh, still in their original configuration. Uh, so you're probably looking at this and thinking, well, you know, how do I go about, uh, you know, there's no rails, there's no, uh, there's, you know, it's not a flat top upper. Uh, well, if you are running an old school rifle or if, you know, maybe you've, uh, you know, you've got uh, a weapon with the A2 handguards or you just really can't afford a, a rail integrated system or a key mod rail, then uh, this is, this video is for you. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and talk about some of our options. First, I want to talk about our options for uh, attaching stuff to the weapon in the event that we don't have a rail or if something maybe doesn't quite fit, like if you've got a scope that's for weaver or beaver tail or whatever and you can't get it on an M1913 Picatinny. Uh, I use the Dynamic Urban Combat Kinetic Tape, also known as duct tape, in uh, Puppy Cam as uh, it's really an effective camo pattern in the fall and uh, I believe that Milsim should be cozy and cuddly like puppies. Uh, so the pattern is actually relatively simple. Uh, you've got a dachshund, looks like a like a toy poodle, maybe a, a terrier mix, um, maybe looks like a I guess like a like a pit, not a pit, like a Jack Russell, maybe golden retriever in there, uh, or a, a, a yellow lab, um, and you got one dude wearing glasses. Uh, you can see him every now and again. Um, so. Uh, the, the pattern is actually surprisingly effective. Um, you know, I usually kind of go against using civilian camo patterns as uh, they're usually really area specific and um, they're just, you know, obviously if I'm playing in, I don't know, San Antonio where it's mostly mesquite, then uh, Mossy Oak Breakup, which is a, mostly a, a pine and uh, like a, a coniferous pattern, is not going to be that effective. Um, but this stuff is surprisingly effective in most uh, arid or, or fall environments, you know, with a lot of browns and some grays mixed in, a lot of deadfall. Um, and in my area, which is, you know, northeastern Texas and southwestern Arkansas, uh, that's a lot of it, what it is right now. Uh, there's not a lot of green, aside from pine trees. And uh, most of the fields we play at are actually, they got a little more oak than pine. And uh, the pines are fairly high up, so there's not a lot of green at all. Uh, so... Let's go on ahead and talk about some of our attachments and how to go about attaching them. So uh, we've gone ahead and outfitted our uh, our weapon with a few different attachments, um, and I'll go over them now. Uh, we'll start at the start. Uh, I hold true to the belief that uh, every rifle needs a flashlight, uh, and that's not just for if you're indoors uh, and you know you need to identify your target. It's also in case of emergencies. Um, you know the one thing you should always have is your weapon. Uh, and if it's attached to your rifle, then you're not going to worry about losing it. Uh, if it's securely attached and you retain your weapon, then uh, you know it's kind of two birds with one stone. What I've done is gone ahead and used the uh, dynamic, dynamic urban combat tape to uh, attach it about where my hand would be uh, if I were to be shouldering the weapon. And pretty much as soon as I grab it, I can just slightly push forward and it's, it's activated. Uh, so that's pretty modular. Uh, the next I want to talk about is actually a uh, form of magnifier. Um, if you're like me, you're, you might be fairly nearsighted, um, details at a distance get kind of blurry. Uh, I originally started wearing glasses because I couldn't read from the back of the classroom. Uh, however, if, you know, for instance, I'm trying to, uh, make out what weapon system someone has, uh, at a range of, 
further than maybe 150, 200 yards, I have to have some form of assistance in most cases. Um, now, usually, like, I can tell if someone's carrying an RPK as opposed to, you know, a regular AK, but for really identifying details about troops and sending in a salute report and determining who are these people, what do they have, and why are they here, I have to have some form of optical assistance uh, just because of my own kind of vision problems, which aren't that bad. I don't wear my glasses a lot. They kind of give me a headache. Uh, but what you can do if you really need it or if, you know, you're looking for a way uh, to kind of have an impromptu magnifier on a budget, uh, take reading glasses and attach them about where your face would fall on the rifle. Uh, unfortunately, you know, this isn't to be used. Uh, you can't really attach this in a way uh, that can co-align with the site. Uh, but if you look at pictures of... Um, you know, troops on deployment or on patrol, a lot of them will have the weapon up on their shoulder uh, viewing through the optic. Uh, so it's kind of the same thing. Bring the weapon up, and uh, there you have it. And uh, this allows you to kind of view at a distance. If it's dark, you turn your flashlight on. Um, and, you know, you can, uh, it, it works fairly effectively. It's nice and stable, um, and, you know, you get to, you know, it, it, you get to get kind of cozy with your rifle, and that's always a good thing. So go ahead and take them off. Uh, and the, the final attachment is a little unorthodox. Something a lot of people look over, look over is, um, you know, several times I've had it happen to me where I have to undergo impromptu arts and crafts, uh, during a, a game or an event. Um, and a lot of people, uh, you know, the AR-15, uh, M7 and M9 bayonets, uh, they're useful, uh, largely in a way that's kind of overlooked for, uh, hostile wildlife. If you play up in Oklahoma or in some parts of Texas, um, hogs can be a thing, uh, and the good thing about a, a sturdy rifle makes an impromptu spear, keeps them at a distance from you, and allows you to engage and kind of uh, fight back an animal without getting close enough for it to actually harm you. Now, I'm not saying go charging after a wild boar with an airsoft rifle with a bayonet, but if you do find yourself in that position, be it a snake, uh, maybe a, a rabbit dog or whatever, it is useful to have that with you, um, as I don't believe there's a field in the world that allows a real firearm, uh, but there, you know, they there are fields that allow uh, full length survival knives and other stuff. Uh, and I do own a few. Um, I'm not really a big knife guy. Uh, I just kind of get what works, and when it breaks, or I get bored with it, I buy something else. But <clears throat> um, I do carry a uh, fillet knife on my belt, largely because um, some of the events I host local, uh, we hunt and trap our own food. Uh, or uh, we'll fish uh, on private land or with a license if necessary. You know, don't poach your food and definitely don't kill things out of season. But um, so I've taken a pair of household uh, safety scissors and gone ahead and attached them to the front of my rifle. And this is useful for, you know, arts and crafts. I mean, really almost any, any application that you could foresee a sharp object being useful for, um, like I said, defending against wildlife. Uh, open them up and just, you know, solid uh, bayonet thrust on a snake. Um, and then if, you know, there's actually a technique where you can grab it between the, uh, grab it b behind the head and uh, push the scissors closed on the ground uh, and behead it. So that's the uh, the outfit I like to run on my rifle. Um, and what's really cool about this is it's, it seems kind of primitive and uh, kind of old school. And, you know, I like that, but a lot of guys don't. The good thing about it is that it's so modular. Um, I mean, it even works on my AK-74. I mean, how many how many systems are compatible with both both East Block and NATO weapons? You don't you don't see that a lot. Um, and I've got a little more powerful but more compact flashlight on this one. I don't know how many lumens it is. Uh, actually, I got that at a gas station. But yeah, so um, I mean, this stuff is just super useful. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, uh, it's a company called Duct Tape, available at Walmart. Um, they're not sponsoring me, but I've also got some other neat products I'd like to tell you guys about some uh, later on in a later video, like food and soap. So, uh, in any case, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, just thought I'd share some knowledge today. Uh, so, thanks for watching, and, uh, you know, it's fairly nice outside. Again, I'm not feeling too well, so I'm going to stay in, but, uh, you know, why don't you go on outside and do something productive with your life? I love you.